We're going to shift a little bit from doing still life and figure to some landscape work. One of the things that makes the southwestern landscape so much fun to do and such a good color study is that they have vivid contrasts of warm and cool colors. And the features in some of the landscapes are so well defined, such as we see here from Arches National Park in uh, Utah, I think. Anyway, um, as I often suggest in starting any kind of drawing, I would be inclined to start with the large shapes first. I would sort of block off an area to draw here, sort of matching the shape of that, not exactly, but close. And then I'm noticing that the arch is a little off center. I'm going to just say that's where that point is. And then it's easy to judge the distance from there to there. So I'm just going to give myself some little anchors to help me know where to go. And this is on an angle here. So that would help me to define those shapes. One of the great things about this is it is an arch, but it is turned sideways. So an arch front on would be equilaterally rounded. This is from the side view, so it's more like that. And we have this wonderful shadow where this rock sort of overhangs there. So that will help us to get that interesting angle. And I've already made this opening probably too wide, but I'm going to just indicate this shape in here because it's so much fun to make sure that I get that. And there's going to be shadow in there in order to make that appear the way we're seeing it. Then I would very quickly just define the horizon line which is full of wonderful hills and mountains here. I'm not even going to indicate that range of very distant mountains. I can put those in later. But this will help me from coloring in areas of, or not coloring in blue where I need the very warm colors and the lighter colors, the yellows and so forth, because wherever I mix the yellow and the blue, I'm going to get a more neutral or a shade look, which is a feature we want to utilize, but not in these areas where the sun is hitting it and the rock is very light. Then I would be inclined to I'm going to indicate that sort of light area there because that's so nice. I would be inclined to just very lightly shade in. And I started this with blue because all of that background is blue. So I didn't want to use a graphite because sometimes that mixes in. I didn't want to use a warm color because that might fight with the blue background. Anyway, I'm just very lightly covering all this background that's going to be blue and that's what's going to really make the arch pop. And I'm working fairly small because there's wonderful detail in the rock striata, strata, strata, whatever, layers of rock. Um, and that's the, the part that I'm going to find fun. So I want to be able to have plenty of time to do that. So by now, oh, and I will go also, I will go ahead and color in blue where I see shaded parts because I'm going to mix the blue and the orange and the yellows and the reds to get those shadows. I'm not going to have any black in my palette. Um, black could kill the vibrancy of this image. So I'm sticking to the primary colors. I've thrown in a little bit of purple, a nice darker blue, and even a green. I might go in, in the foreground here 
just to distinguish it from that very blue hazy background. So I'm going to indicate here so they don't get away from me where those shadows are. And I don't have to, as a matter of fact, I don't want real rigid lines because you can see on here that these shadows, rock is, is very organic, of course, and it, it's rounded in some places, it's sharp in others. And so it's important to make an interesting drawing as well as to represent it carefully as to what we see here, to have some edges soft and some edges hard. And that's what will make it even more interesting. So I'm just matching what I see here. And if it's not exact, that's fine. I want the basic shape of this rock. I can um, invent some of the little cracks and crannies if I want to. So there we almost have we already have a, a rather interesting shape going on there. From there, I would go to indicating, starting with the yellow, and I have a, another drawing already in progress. And I started where I saw yellow. Now, if I were doing this on my own, I would probably go through and very lightly continue on with wherever I saw yellow. But it takes some time, and I want to show different stages in this one drawing here. So I did several things in one area. But again, as I say, if I were doing this on my own, I would go through and do all the yellow. Then I would go through and do a layer of orange. Now, I could not find my orange pencil. So it's uh, also possible to create an orange by overlaying a light touch, and I emphasize light, red this is a it's an orangey red but i can overlay that on the yellow and i can get a nice orange with that then in places where i want heavy red for instance up in here it looks very hot so to speak i just press differently so colored pencils are very um it's very important to learn pressure. Uh, lighter, you get a lighter tone, obviously. Darker, you get a more filled in and a more intense tone. So it's good to be able to change the pressure of the pencil as you go along because that creates almost a whole different color just with one pencil. Then where I have shadow places, I went in with some purple. So purple and yellow being uh, opposites on the color wheel, they will create a darkened neutral area, but a very vibrant um, shadow. And in places where this very intense shadow to show where the, there's a, a gap here between these two rock forms, um, I went in with a much darker blue and really pressed hard and I even went in as well with a little bit of green just to get as much pigment down there as possible and that distinguished it from this sort of softer purple. I also used the purple, uh, began doing the background here and again I would keep this very light. This background part I might not do any differently. I might just make this foreground this is our midground this would I would call this the midground background midground foreground a little bit more intense and a little bit darker than the background and then here in the this is midground but it's closer than that that will be quite dark there is a cast shadow right there so I'm going to indicate that but that's where I added just a little bit of green. And this is a, a process that takes a while, but it's fun because it's fun to find all those uh, striations of rock and those shadow shapes. So it's worth it to just take the time and have fun with it. 